is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone is worthy of our praise. Now I'm going to teach it to you guys. I want you to say, Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. Sing it. Let me hear you sing. time. Kadosh. Kadosh me holy. The next part. He's the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. Let me hear you say it. The next part says, He alone is worthy of our praise. Let me hear you say it. Then we're going to do it all our way through. Say, Kadosh, Kadosh. Then we're going to sing that part again. Sing. He's the Lamb of God. 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 He's the Lamb of God.
more powerful. Hey, I, hey, I, hey. None can stand against you. Hey, I, hey. It's, if God is for you, who can be against you? Hey, I, hey. Come on, y'all losing power stronger. Hey, I, hey, I, hey. One more time, may I hey. say it's the Lamb of God. Come on, say he's the Lamb. Against those that are warring against us this morning, oh God, in the spirit and in the natural. 
the greatness of power and the glory and the victory hallelujah our God he is the greatness of The majesty king and the supreme God, we bow down and worship him. We worship him because he is the majesty king and the supreme Bow down to worship him. You know the song may be familiar. You, you, you're trying to figure out where you heard it. That's when, that's when uh, Minister Teta was here. That's the song he wrote. And that song has resonated with me since, I, since we had that, that conference. I listened to the words. It say, our God is the greatness of power. the glory and the victory. It said he is the majesty king and the supreme God. We bow down to worship him. Our God, he is the greatness of power. Hallelujah, he is the majesty king and the supreme God. We bow down to worship him, worship him, he is the majesty king and the supreme Y'all ready to sing it? Our God. Our God is the greatness of power and the glory and 
we bow down. He's the majesty. He's the majesty king and the supreme God. Bow down to worship him. Cause he is the majesty king and the supreme Cause you are the majesty king And you're the supreme God I bow down in worship him Somebody just need to bow Somebody just need to bow down and worship him And glorify his holy name Bow before his majesty and bless his holy name. God, I give you praise. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Come on, bow down and worship. God, we magnify your holy name. There is none like you, Jesus.
which is echoing what heaven is saying that God is holy and that he's great we're just echoing what God is what, what heaven is saying what the word of God is saying what our forefathers have said about him since the beginning of time that our God is a great God splendor a king Lord in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in life and darkness tries to hide and tremble at his voice and tremble at his voice now praise is our
Father, we just want to thank you and bless you, how great our God. We thank you for this morning, another opportunity to be in your presence. I submit myself to you for your use, and I also commit every single one, oh God, those who are watching online and those that are here into your hand, that they are hard to be a fertile ground, to be able to receive your word, because of a heart that is fertile, when the word of Father God is being planted, they bear fruit in hundred folds. Lord, I thank you that all our hearts are fertile. I will be able to hear from you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ministry. Father God, to your people, through me to them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And everything will go accordingly. Thank you for the order of this service. I bless your holy name. I praise your holy name. You alone are worthy. What you like is what you do. I thank you as I submit myself to your leadership. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence, for your power, for your ministration. Thank you for the anointing that make preaching and everything listen easier. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for the prophetic in depth. Thank you for word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I give you the praise. Oh, yes, Lord. It's not by might, but by your power, says the Lord. We thank you that for your power, God, I will say, has enveloped us, O oh God, have wrapped itself around us. I give you the praise, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want you to tell your neighbor good news. Be honest with you, I don't know what kind of good news is that for since yesterday. Good news, good news. So I want us to turn to your neighbor and say good news. Yes. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor that I believe in the good news of God. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Yesterday, Friday, the Lord was speaking to us about storm. And today, he was He's also going to talk to us about the mystery behind. He said there will be a grain again. But if you look at this, like, if you watch for the past four months, the messages are always the same. You see, God don't change until he per performs what he says he performs. Uh, the ways of God are not our ways. I want you to clap your hand for Jesus. Can somebody clap your hand for Jesus? Amen. You clap your hand for Jesus. Amen. So turn with me to the book of Ruth, the mystery behind it, the mystery behind all this, R Ruth 1. I'm waiting for you, please. Ruth 1, it said, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, when to dwell in the country of Moab. Mind you, Moab is a country, is a country that do, they, they are idol worshippers. Amen. And this man left his country because there was a famine and went to Moab. Idol worship land, country. All the people that dwell there worship idols. They are the one that, you know, they sacrifice their daughters, sons, firstborn. They will just sacrifice it to this Moab, Moab God. Amen. So they went to dwell in the country of Moab, and he and his wife and his two sons, the name of them, the name of, of the man, the one second. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, the name of the man was Elimelech. Alimelech, mm -hmm. and the name of his wife was what? Naomi. We all know this story, but let's read along. Uh -huh. And the name of his wife was Naomi. Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. Amen. If Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Three. Then um, Alimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. The husband died. There was famine. There was trouble. There was problem. Then they move. Then you get there. Praise the Lord. You know that 
children of Israel as a Christian, and we all know husbands are the head. Wives are helpmates. You help your husband. But most decisions are taken and made by the husband. And then they'll bring it to their wife and say, this is what I want to do. Do you understand? So I can imagine the husband say, hey, there's farming here. Let's get out. And let's go to the land of Moab, the Moabai, the Moab country. They went, and after a while, the husband died. I'm talking about the mystery behind it. And also, the ways of God are not our ways. Sometimes the way we think, we might think this is the way it is. Do you understand? And God also can decide not to reveal the mystery behind to you. And sometimes he can also decide to reveal the mystery to you. Praise the Lord. So the man, so if, imagine if Naomi or the husband knew that if I moved to that country, my husband would have, do you think they're going to go? They're not going to go. But they move and the husband die. I'm talking about the mystery behind it. The ways of God are not our ways. You see, the way the heaven is higher than the earth, so are his ways are different from us. We might plan, but it is only God plan that do God that stand. Hallelujah. So let's read. Ruth 1 and 4. Now they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. Then both Malon and Chilion also died. So the woman, the woman survived her two sons and her husband. Six. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people. Praise the Lord. He, she have heard that the Lord has visited the place that, do you understand? That their husband, uh, that there was famine that they left. Praise the Lord. But I want to ask that, do they really, do they know that all these things will happen? I'm talking about the mystery behind it. So they make up their mind for them to move and go back to where, do you understand? So they, they went. But let's read here, when the two daughters-in-laws, we know all this story, everybody have read this. Ruth, everybody know that the daughters-in-law, one wanted, they both wanted to follow him, follow her, sorry, follow Naomi. And then one said, Naomi said, no, you cannot follow me because I'm old. I can't even marry again and then have children for you to marry. Them. Even if you, I have children again, you guys are grown. You guys are this, they will be still children. So why do you want to follow me to go? Praise the Lord. Let's read. Let's pick it up from there. Thank you. Ruth 1 and 7. Therefore she went out from the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. Return each to your mother's house. Don't follow me. Why is Naomi said, Don't follow me. There's nothing good inside of me anymore. That means at that moment, the fate of Naomi is no longer. Sometimes you go through a situation that can beat you to the, to the ground. If you don't take care, you're going to feel like God has deserted you. You will feel like God is not there with you. Aramose. He know the down, he know your down moment. He know. He knew that Naomi is going through a lot. Naomi has been hit by her husband died. Her two sons. It's like you're going through, you're a Christian, you're a child of God. But life has turned, turned you upside down. That is where it is very important and very we have to be very careful. Because that moment I have learned during the years, that moment you don't know what God is doing. The mystery behind, the purpose behind. Remember on Friday I said, how can Daniel be thrown in the lion's den? This is the man, a righteous man, a holy man. Let me tell you, those that are not going anywhere with God, Satan, don't go after them. If you are not living righteous, Satan don't care for you. If your destiny is great, the enemy will hit you left and right. 
He can hit your children. He can hit your job. He can hit your family. Every other thing that concerns you, the, the enemy will come after it. For make you to doubt God. For make you to think that God has deserted you. Just like Naomi. Naomi was a faithful woman. A woman that walked with God. But why would the husband have to die? The ways of God are not our ways. The mystery behind it. He said, don't follow me. Don't follow me. My life is empty. I moved to this country full. I moved here with my husband and children. But as somebody, an unbeliever, will say that, no, you have deserted God. Naomi is saying, God have deserted me. The fact that your husband might not be with you doesn't mean God has deserted you. The mystery behind why God allowed these things to happen. You say, after, after everything, after I've completed what I want to do in your life, you be a quarter master. You begin to understand my way. Because some of the things that God don't need to discuss it with you, because if he discuss with you, it will be so scary that you will run away. Do you get it? Do you get it? Because it takes me back. When the Lord asked someone to minister to me, he said, God said, I'm entrusted church in your hand. I said, what am I going to do with church? Because it's far from me. That is not something I want to do. But he did it gradually. Gradually. He pushed you to a situation that you cannot back down, but surrender to God. And as time goes on, God don't hate you. God said, I should tell you, my dear. He said, my son, he said, I should tell you, he doesn't hate you. As a matter of fact, he loves you in the place where you are. Your brokenness is ministering to him. The host of angels. If only you see the host of angels that have surrounded you this morning, you would know that you are with God. You're on a journey, you're on a ride with God. And at the end, you will know. He said, who can contend with him and win the battle? You say, leave me. Don't follow me. I'm empty. God was with me. That is the mind of now. God was with me. Now God is no longer with me. He have deserted me. My husband have died. My two children have died. And you too, you want to follow me? There is nothing for me to give to you. Go back to your mother's land. Go back to where you came from. Oprah. You say, no problem. I will go back. But Ruth say, do not dare. Don't try it to drive me away from you. I don't know what it is about you, but I am stick with you forever. Where you will die is where I will die. And where you will be buried is where I will be buried. Your God will be my God. I'm a Moabite. I serve, I'm a Satan worshiper. This is, Mo this is Naomi. Do you understand? This is what root Naomi and root. But Naomi is a child of God. Root is not a child of God. But the mystery behind. A devil worshiper. Do you know the mind of God? It take me back to, it take me back to Moses and his, his, his sister and his brother. Aaron and Miriam. They were so angry and gossiping about the wife of their brother because he, she also is a Moabite, an idol worshiper. Let's trace back and go back to Abraham. Abraham come from an idol worshiper's family. But God said, leave your father's house, your mother's house. There's something I want to do with this world and I need you because I check your heart. And I want to use you. I want to use you. So leave your father's house and your mother's house. First he started with terror. His father. But his father got to Ram and then what happened? He died there. And then he said, continue the journey. Come with me. Come with me. So that what I want to do, Jesus, God have Jesus on his mind. He's looking for someone he can take. How come? How can Ruth come into the picture? 
I'm talking about the mystery. Look at the journey. When I was reading the scripture this morning, then I put it on audio to play it again for me to hear. I've read the scripture over and over. But really, every time you read, you get revelation out of it. The mystery. You say, entreat me not. I'm going with you. Don't tell me to back down. Don't tell me to leave you. I don't know what it is. This is your God. What do you think? What did Naomi do for Ruth to see that I'm going to follow you? He said, I know. I've seen you wake up in the morning. Oh, Naomi, you do morning devotion. You call all your family. You read the scriptures to us. You do. We do church in the family. Everything now. Things have gone bad for you. But Naomi, Ruth is remembering the things that she have done. And so I will not, I will not stop following you. I'm going to go with you. Everywhere you go, I will go with you. Praise the Lord. Let's go to two. They move now. They move to the Moabite land. They moved, sorry, they moved to Israel. That is a country, a foreign country. These are enemies. Do you understand? These are the enemies. The Moabite hates the Israelites. The Moabite, God don't want them to have anything to do with them. Because they are what? Devil worshippers. Idol worshippers. So do not have anything in common with them. Don't even marry them. That is God's instruction. Don't marry them. Haram see. By the ways of God. I'm here to tell you. If you are going through, don't think that God has deserted you. Haram see. His ways are not our ways. There was a lot of virgins and a lot of females. That they were, were, were raised. In the house of God. But why Ruth? My dear, what you count out, God have not counted that thing out. One thing I have learned, people that come from the world, they serve God more than those that are born in the church. Because they know too much. Praise the Lord. This is a Moabite. That is why you see the, the woman at the well. That is a prostitute. But why would God minister to prostitute? Hello? If you are ministering to party, I don't need to hang out with you all the time, but I have to take you to prayer and find time and meet with you, not in a place where you are doing your party. No, exclude myself, me and you somewhere and minister the word to you. My dear, let us learn not to count people out because God's ways are not our ways. His plan are not our plan. Ruth, that don't know left and right, that was born in the house of idol worshippers. All she know is that every firstborn, dear God, you have to sacrifice them. She witnessed it growing up. Now she married a man that feared the Lord, the man have died. She should have gone back. But God weighs what he wanted to do, the mystery behind. Aramusi. Let us be very careful that we take people to God and pray and make sure to know who they are. Instead of us, just look at them and just conclude that this is who they are and this is how they're going to be. The mystery behind. Let's read. Ruth chapter 2 verse 1. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. 2. So Ruth the Moabites said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him, in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Four. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Ruth chapter 2 verse 5. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. Let's go to three. Let's go to three. Let's jump to three, please. Okay. 
Ruth 3 and 1. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now Boaz, whose young women you were with, is, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. 3. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be, when he lies down, that you shall notice the place where he lies. And you shall go in, uncover his feet, and lie down. And he will tell you what you should do. 5. And she said to her, All that you say to me I will do. So she went down to the thresh threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. And, and after Boaz had eaten and drunk... Amen. Sorry. Let's move to uh, 4.13. I want us to, you know, because I can't read all. Ruth? Four, mm -hmm. 4.13. Okay. 13. Ruth chapter 4, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And, she, and when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. One second. I want to highlight something here. He said when, she, when he went to her, the Lord gave conception. So that should let us know. Conception comes from God. You can go to your wife and go to your wife, and you might not conceive. It doesn't mean the man is not productive. It doesn't mean the woman is also not productive. It is God that gives what? conception. So when somebody, this is just by the way, when somebody married and they're not conceiving, do not tag a person thinking that there's something wrong because it is God that do what? That give conception. If you read a book of also Samuel, Hannah went through, I don't know why I have to say this, Hannah also went through the same thing. His rival, her rival was conceiving. She wasn't conceiving. So conception truly do what? Come from God. I don't know who, who this word is for. But I have to say it. Amen. Let's continue. Ruth 4.14. 4, then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without a close relative. And may his name be famous in Israel. 15. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who, who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. 16. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to him. Also, the neighbor women gave him a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. 18. Now this, now this is the genealogy of Perez. Perez begot Hezron. Hezron begot Ram. And Ram begot Aminadab. Aminadab begot Nas Nashon, and Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz, and Boaz begot Obed. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. Jesse begot David. I want you to look at the, the lineage, the bloodline. And Moabai, the mystery behind. And Moabai. Praise the Lord. And Moabai that have nothing in common with Israel that God could pick from there and bring to a point that our Messiah that called, will call Ruth a grandmother. Our ways are not what? Our, our ways are not God's ways. The way situation happened and everything, the same way like also Aaron and also his, his sister were laughing at Moses. They were talking about Moses because of his wife. Why have you picked an outsider? Why have you picked a foreigner? Why have you picked, she's not from Israel. We have forgotten that God also called, when he called the Israelite, he also left the Israelite and came to we the Gentiles. He called you and I the Gentiles to do all, to adopt us, to add it to his sons 
Because the children of Israel will not do the things that God wants him to do. They don't want to do it, but the Gentiles immediately step in. One thing I have realized, when somebody from the world come to Christ, they give their all to Christ because they have tasted the world. And now coming to Christ, they compare the two to see. Naomi was entreating Ruth to leave, and Ruth said, no, don't leave me. They both did not know that they're going to carry. They will be the grandmother. They're going to be the one that God wants to use to contribute to Israel. That they will be the one that Jesus will come out of their loins. Naomi have no idea. Many of us that we have no idea what God is doing. A little glimpse that we see and we know. And as I said on Friday, when I asked God such a question, he said, look here, if anybody don't understand something, because I did not give them understanding. If anybody understands something, I give them understanding. I say, God, what do you mean? He said, look at the time of Jesus, when Jesus came. Why is it that people were praying 24-7? They were waiting to see the Messiah, but when the Messiah came, they didn't see, they didn't even understand. They couldn't understand, why would Messiah be born? Or come from a family of what? Carpenters. They were expecting the Messiah. Their imagination and the way they think that things have to be this way. My dear, things don't go the way you and I want it to go. God want the way. If not, Naomi will not be able when the Ruth came in. Ruth will not be able to be the grandmother of Jesus. Because she is a Moabite. She's from the idol worship family. But married to Christian. Or married to a Christian brother. And the Christian brother died. She should have gone back. But I say no. Because God, there's a mystery. God wants to show you and teach you that I can take anything. And I can take whosoever and change and transform. As a matter of for what you have deserted is what I want. Have you seen that the most, the most stones have been rejected? A child from a family I've come across. that Mothers that you will reject that because you see the behavior of your child. And you already count that behavior, that person out. Because the person is doing it, a person, but you don't know the mystery. You don't know what is behind. Something good is about to happen. I will say, it's about to take place, and all eyes will see it. All eyes, and God say, and all understanding will understand. They will now have understanding to know that I, God, I rule in the heaven, and I also rule on the earth. I rule in the affairs of men. Because I'm doing something new. I'm gathering. God is gathering. And you will understand. Some of you will wake up from your bed. One day the Lord showed me. A few days now. I think well, what a Friday or whatever. The Lord showed me one person that's sitting on her bed. Sitting on his bed crying. And I was like God why? He said I will give understanding to him. That he will understand. Because if you don't understand, I say, God, so if they don't understand, because you have not given them understanding, you say, it is my way, not your way. Neither my will, not your will. What I will do and what I want to do, it is what I want to do. I laid the foundation. Me, I wasn't there. You were not there. So we cannot decide to God how she should rule his earth. If not, and Naomi and Ruth. Naomi thought all is done. All is gone. Everything. Nothing will work anymore. Because God have deserted me. But he didn't know life is about to start. He decided not to use her children to start that. She could have used the children of Naomi. But all of them died. When I was reading the scripture, I came to first Samuel. And I would see that Samuel was faithful to God by his children. They did not walk in the ways of God. So God did not choose them. I didn't understand. He said, no. These children did not walk in the ways of God. They connive with people when everybody comes in. The same way with Eli's children. People of God. We have to be very careful. Don't let us plant. And your children don't benefit from it. Don't let us plant. God cut them off because they were, their heart was not for the Lord. But Ruth's heart, she was a Moabite. 
But the heart was totally sold out to God. Living in the household of Christian. When someone living in your house, everything you do, they see it. Your prayer is that God, let your spirit and your power, let the Holy Ghost arrest them. You might not talk to them one, one by one like this, or one in one like this, but let your Holy Ghost arrest them. Let them know you and leave that aspect of, that aspect of life to God and let God run it. Ruth gave her life to Jesus. Gave her life. He prepared the way. She became the career of our, of our world, our savior. He also, she also the same thing. David, we know David. Who David stand for? A man for war. A man after God's own heart. A man that when God comes to him that you are wrong. He said, daddy, I'm sorry. Ah, forgive me. I've been a child. I am wrong. Yes. She said, ah, David. A man that you are inside my heart. A man that I, hand, I single-handedly picked you. Ah. If you have wanted another woman, you could have asked me, what is it that you need? I, God, will not give it to you. It's not only David alone, every child of God. Anything that we need, God wants us to come to him and ask him not to go and take and covet what is not yours. You have made this law. You say, ah, David, but where does, where does he, he come from? He came from who? Roots. A Moabite. The mystery. What you are thinking is not what God is thinking. I am here to let you know. No matter what and whatever you are thinking. God says, I should tell you. The same man and the same boy will preach the gospel. And nobody can take him out. No one can kill him. God says, I have sworn by myself. And I have vowed. Adam will say, your tears are before me. Adam, who see under I say, every time you cry, I send forth my angels to come and console you. Oh, my son. Oh, my beloved. You don't know the mystery behind. You have no idea what is going on. The enemy will tempt again. He will try again. <laughs> For death. But I, God, will raise him back again. So he will know he had been to the other side. I will allow him to see hell and heaven. So when he come back, he realized that, I God, I'm not playing because I'm gathering the saint. The world is coming to an end. What you are calculating and what you are thinking is not the same way. It's like I sit back, I sat back, watch the enemy plan. He planned all kinds of stuff. I allow him to plan. At the end, I step in and I scatter it. Ah. You forgotten, you're not fighting against flesh and blood. So I give you, I gave you the child, I gave you the son, I gave you your children. I am the one that gave them to you. Ah, who do you think that can come and snatch them? Ah, at the end, of what I have said, it will be exactly if a Moabite, if Naomi could have, if Naomi could have that heart and accommodate, and Ruth could have that heart. Who gave the heart? Aramu say. Have you also forgotten that I am the same God that hardened the heart of man? He said, I hardened the heart of Pharaoh just to prove my existence. Because I made him. I did the same thing to Nebuchadnezzar. And I taught him a lesson. If, if Ruth, if Ruth, could carry on the assignment, could carry on my plan, could carry on what I intend to do on earth without her knowing that she'd been used by me. She have no idea that I'm bringing the Messiah. She was carrying the Messiah, was inside. It was in her loins. It was in there to come forth. What he's going to do. What will take place? So if you read the genealogy of Naomi, you could see how David, Oben, do you understand? Oben, all these things, do you think that they plan it? They did not plan. It happened the way God wanted it to be. Who can point his finger or her finger at any of my elect? You are the elect. 
Who can point their finger at you? My dear, I'm here to let you know. Eat, eat and drink and sleep and watch what God will do. What is about to take place. The enemy is very cunning. And he's manipulating and cunning and everything. Do you understand? Oprah left. What would have happened to Oprah? After, the, after Ruth keeps saying that, no, don't follow me. Don't follow me. She left. But Ruth stayed. She don't know what will become. He said, whatever happened, we'll move to Jerusalem, we'll move to Israel, and we die. We die. As, let us die together. She have no faith anymore. Naomi have no faith anymore in her. A time comes that you come to a point that if you don't take it, you have no faith anymore. Because it hits you left and right and left and right and left and right. Ah, and if you don't take care, if God don't send you somebody that can believe in you and say, no, rise again. You will rise again. You're not going to be like it. The Lord is with you. The fact you are going through doesn't mean God has deserted you. God is behind the scene and is working. Ah, you will conceive and your own breast will feed your children. No, the fact you are going to, the fact you cry at night. Every night you cry. You feel abandoned and deserted. You see, Sometimes God allows us to go through that place. You be on the ground, you be on the floor, and all you know is him. All you know is him, and you cry. And they say, I am there with you. God never forsake his own. While you are there, he sent his angel to surround you. And you are there, console you to comfort you that you're not going to break, you're not going to fall. Because Naomi thought that all is gone. All is gone. Husband died, children are dying. She's old. She's old, but the Lord that knows everything gave Naomi, gave Naomi, he gave Ruth to Naomi to be a daughter to Naomi. And they were like this. They understand each other and everything. He said, I don't want you to go to any other field. I want you to go to the field of Boaz. She, she's a woman of wisdom now. And she's dreaming again. Now Naomi have come to a place that you understand and everything. He said, my daughter, go then. Thank God for Ruth that obey. She went to where the mother-in-law asked her. Obedient is better than sacrifice. She obeyed, went to the field. We all know the story. And then the man, the richest young man on, in Israel, there were so many females ah, that feared the Lord. But why Ruth? Why Ruth? Ruth got a favor because it was orchestrated by God. God was bringing the Messiah and she needed the vessel. She needed someone. She needed, look at the, look at the descendant, look at the bloodline. Every child that was born there, look at David. Ah. Ekoromasa. She stood for, he stood for God. The mystery behind your challenge. The mystery behind your trials. The mystery behind your sicknesses. The mystery behind divorce or whatsoever you are going through. The mystery and the message in there. It is what you want God. Ekoromasa. The Bible said there was a man that's sitting at the pool of Bethesda. She sat there for 38 years. She's looking for someone every time he tried. To fall into the water so he can get cleansed. Somebody else come. Somebody else come. Somebody else come. Until Jesus came. Uh, Jesus came. But Peter also was passing. Jesus came and he taught the disciples very well. They were passing. He said, what do you want? He said, oh, I don't want anything. I just he said, okay, I don't have silver. I don't have gold. I don't have money. Because where you sit, you sit there to ask for arms and everything. But nothing do I have. All I have that in the name of Jesus. I want you to rise and walk. The Bible says he rose and walked. The mystery for 38 years just for God's power to be revealed. Somebody have to sit and be what? And be a leper or and be what? Cripple. Some was also in the book of John. Some also was blind and everything. They were asking who, who sinned for this man to be blind and this thing. He said nobody sinned so that the power of God might be seen. The mystery behind. Ask God, what is the mystery behind my challenge? 
What is the mystery? What is the message behind all this? And in this, what is the message in there? There is a message. God don't just get up. The message that you will soon understand and you will soon get it. It's not everybody that understands the way that I, God, operates. Not everyone understands the way God operates. Sometimes you can ask God something. And God can answer right there. And sometimes you can ask him something and it will take years. He will not answer you. It doesn't mean that he's not answering. It's because sometimes he's taking you to, he wants you to learn at the process. It's the process. Do you understand? If he show you the whole picture, many of you will pack and you go. You will just pack everything. Do you understand? You will just know. If you show you that you get married to this one and there will be a challenge and challenge and battles and battles. So marriage, you have to fast your way through. Because what you are dealing with, you are dealing with powers and things. So God will put you on fasting, but he will not tell you. You are, you are going through the because of whatsoever, because of the marriage or because of the job or because of your, your, your sickness or because of whatsoever. The ways of God are not our ways. The more you try to comprehend and understand, the more you cannot understand him. He gives you little by little. Because it doesn't make sense for a Moabite. A Moabite to marry Israelis and even carry, become the grandmother of Jesus. It doesn't make sense. Somebody will marry and then we see someone come around the marriage. You pray and pray and then immediately... That person gets cleared away. And someone will sit. This one come after this one come. You keep praying and you keep praying. Somebody will think, but you go to church every day. Why is it that you can't pray? My dear, the mystery. You don't know why God chose that route. Everybody's route is what? Is different. My route is different. Your route is different. I might not be able to go through the route you are going. And you cannot also go through the route that I'm going. I go. Because the mystery behind and whatever that God intends and he wants to achieve the purpose of God in the, midst of the, in the midst of the message. How, how Ruth was able to carry the tax without her knowing that she's even carrying the tax. Because she will obey. She will obey Ruth. And as Ruth asks, I don't want you to follow me. It is easy mouth to speak. <laughs> but time will tell. Things are about to take shape and about to, I almost say, form. Because the form that I'm seeing, it is not complete. You see, can, can you somebody draw, you know, you see a circle. And a circle is just at this side that you see. But the, everything else is plain. So you don't understand why this thing is playing and then a little bit. But God is forming a circle. Gradually he's drawing his own circle. And at the end when he's done, it is like invisible circle. Only those that he permitted, he allowed, he have equipped them to see and to be able to read. Aramose. The intent are the one that are going to understand and stand. And at the end that they will know that indeed that God has been. Some time ago the Lord gave me a message and I couldn't understand. And then this morning he brought it back to my memory and he said that the generation that found him and so there was a new generation that rose and that new generation they've never tasted my miracle. They've never seen anything I have done. They are the one when God was speaking to me this morning I begin to understand. But he gave me this word some long, long time ago. I preached on it but I still didn't get the fullness of it. But today he made me understand the new generation that arose They've never seen. I remember once I told you and another person in my office about this message, about this new generation. I remember we were talking. My son broke down and cried. He said, a new generation that rose. New generation never experienced miracle. They've never seen what I have done. They've never seen it. They were the new generation. <laughs> they were a new generation that they're going to see what is about to take place. And Moabai. A Koromasa. People will count you out. Don't count yourself out because of your challenges you are going through. Because of what you are doing. Don't count yourself out. Just like the way that Naomi counted herself out. But she didn't know going back. 
She didn't know what God wanted to do, what is about to do in her mind. I am old. Let me go back and then just die quietly. Do you want to send and die and they bury? But yet God have not. He said, No, Naomi, you will not die. I've not started. I'm bringing a mess, and I need you. And I need you with your daughter-in-law. Is the one I need. I have chosen to use you guys to be able to bring forth. You understand? Oben will come, and after Oben, uh, Jason, for Jason will come, and after Jason, David will come. And from David, the Messiah will come out. So I needed you to be, to nurture this baby, to teach her how, to be a mother to this girl. Now you don't have, you are empty, but I have Aramosi. The house was empty, but Oben came and filled the house all over again and every other thing. So if your house is empty, I'm here to let you know God is about to fill your house all over again. When you have given yourself out and you think all is done, because the mystery is that for God to refill back your house that is empty, to fill it back again, if it is job, something new is about to take place. You will shock her. And a coro master, you will give God the praise. It's a new generation. I'm raising up a new generation and bless them beyond measure and expand their authority and their coast. But never forget where I brought you out from. Because I'm going to break every bridge that's stopping you. Every bridge that make you incompetent and make you not to be able to have. I'm breaking the naysayers that are thinking that. And those that are thinking and speaking over your life spiritually against you. In the name of those that go back to your country and do all kinds of stuff against you. I will show them that I go. I found the woman. I found the man after my own heart. But never forget where you stand. Because very soon things are going to turn around. Things are going to change you're going to break the walls, the walls of Jericho, whatever that was standing before you take your leg like this and you break it and you keep on breaking and you keep on going and you keep on going because nothing else again, my Koriakata that is why he told Jesus and told the Koromasa, told the parent of Jesus you go to, you leave this place and go until I am done, until I am to let me tell you, God is cutting everything that will stand in your way so I'm cutting it out and I'm removing what I need to remove so you can stand and when I I am through now. I Koromasa, a key under that. When we came to a Koromasa, when we came to Shatin, this is what I saw. Can you help me? Just stand up. Huh? Can you help me? You stand up for me, and you stand up for me. This is what I saw. You say I'm tightening. Come here. I'm tight. Lock your hand. No, lock your hand with her hand too. Lock you hand. lock your hand with this hand. Yes, circle. Yeah. This is what I saw. So I'm tightening it, and as I tighten, nobody will be able to come through again. So I'm tighten it. I say, Jesus, I'm tighten it. I'm tighten the cycle. I am tighten my waist because you don't understand. I say, you will never understand until I am complete. I completed what I want to complete it. What I want to complete in your life. You say, but when God is trying to complete something, he's trying to do that. It hurts. You will cry. So the crying you doing, it is okay that you cry. Because he's starting, he's breaking someone, removing some things. Uh, he's doing this thing he has been saying for a long time. And I couldn't get it. Uh, these ways are not our ways. That is why the Israelites, they were complaining. Why do you have to take, why do you have to take Moab? And Moab come into our land. And Moab, be careful. Be very careful. If not, you're going to see the drug addict being saved. You're going to see the prostitute being saved. You're going to see the Halloween being saved. Those you have count them out. But let me tell you, deep down inside, they are crying to God. They are crying to God. God, where are you? I want to stop. But I can't stop. And when I completely deliver them, and you're going to not throw them in your hands. And you will know that I am God. And you take them through. Because they will serve me faithfully. It's a new generation. I didn't get it until this morning. I preached the message. But I said I didn't get full understanding. It's a new generation that have never. They've never seen the miracle of God. They've never. They've never. And they're going to see the miraculous things that they will do. So I'll raise you. I'll break you through. <laughs> so I will do it. <laughs> because the prayer of what of the righteous I will let march. And watch and be careful. It's a calculation going on. It's a calculation. You're going to break through break time. But it's a calculation going on to do you like this. So remember, he's been saying it. The breakthrough will come. 
for the new generation. You ask God, am I part of the new generation? Am I a new generation? I myself don't even know the new generation. The new generation, ma shekuriakata, is going to be amazing. Koromasa, let me tell you, your house will be refilled. Your joy will be complete. And your tears will wipe away. You're going to stand. He, he's looking for those that have been through. They've been through and they stay there with him. I'm talking about stay there with him, with God. And see and God bring them out. And they stand and begin to declare. They declare that this is what God has done. I suffer. I went through with my son. I went through with this person. And the Lord, my Ekoromasa, some of you that the Lord trusts and the Lord loves so much. Why? It's because he knows that if I throw you into the sea, if I throw you into the den, you're not going to curse me out, but you're going to bless my name. Because you know what I'm capable of doing. Do you understand? A Moabai. How can God how can a Moabite come to our land? How can a Moabite come to our land? They did not know that they say Moabite had come to the land. The Lord had given a new heart. The Lord had changed the heart. The Lord had transformed the heart. And the Lord is in business with it. The Lord has a contract with her in the name of Jesus. And they were wondering, a Moabite, your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. Neither your thoughts are my thoughts. The way you think and plan things, I don't plan the same way. Whatever you have calculated, already calculated before you come to calculate. And your calculation will go nowhere. Whatever you think and it is what it is, it will not amount to nothing. Because anything that I, God, have not spoken, it has said, it will amount to nothing. The same way, I cannot stand here and say, I'm preaching and I'm praying against anyone. I cannot uh, preach or pray against anyone. Because it will go nowhere. If any, pro any preaching and any prayer was not the Holy Ghost. You cannot preach against nobody neither. Are you going to pray against anybody? Have you forgotten? In the book of Psalm 53, Psalm 54, sorry. He said they will surely gather but not by me. Whosoever that gathered against you are. As long as it is not me, not well. So whosoever will begin to speak curses or pray against you, that prayer will amount to what? Nothing. You pray according to the direction. Of the Holy Spirit. You cannot preach what will make you happy. Okay? Because if you preach what will make you happy. Or what will make the people happy. They will not bear fruit. A Moabai. A Moabai. A Moabai. A Koromasa. How can a Moabai. Root a Moabai. Come to our land. And not only that. Even get the favor. Of the richest young man. Did I ask you not to get a favor? Did I ask you not to? I am doing what I know best. I am not saying that uh, I grew up in the church. I did not grow up in the church. I grew up in the, uh, the house of idol worship. By Mary, a man that feared the Lord. And I watched him. And I listened to the man. And the man taught me the ways of God. And I've stayed with them all these years. And I realized that the man and the father and the mother, they are God-fearing. The fact that Naomi lost everything does not mean God have deserted him have deserted her. the fact that you're going through challenges and everything the fact that so much burden maybe tears at night in your marriage that you don't understand you want to give up you want to walk out it doesn't mean God is not hearing you God hears you his ways are not his ways are not your ways the mystery the mystery behind was God Saving root. Saving root. Pick root from the Moabite land. And for the Naomi and the family, teach her the ways of God. And accepted it. And said, I will not go back to my idol worship family. But I'm going to follow you. Oh, Naomi. I know that there's something good in you. You taught me well. The fact that you are down does not mean I have to desert you. No, God is still with you. I don't know what will become of us, but I am still with you. They have no idea. They are embarking on a journey of the whole world, getting to know them. Because of that, you and I know the name of Ruth and Naomi. Because they made a decision. Hallelujah. Because God's plan for our life, only, a, I would say, 1% that will know. The remaining... 
you don't know. The Lord saved you so he can save somebody else. He said he saved you so you can save your husband. So your job is to continue to pray. You pray, say, Lord, I sit right here. I will sit right here and pray for him until you save him. If you can save me, then you can save him. Don't be judgmental. When God saves you, don't come and be judgmental and try to judge every aspect of the person, whatever they do. When you see them doing anything that's not right, report the person to God. Be careful. Because Naomi was in the same place. Ruth said, how can you follow me? How can you follow me for me to go where I'm going? He said, forget about it. This thing is done deal. I'm not going anywhere. I'm following you. If you don't know, I will tell you. Wherever you be, I will be. And wherever you die, I'm going to die over there. The same way when God told, he told Joseph and the mother, he said, I want you to take this young child and go to, and go to, and go to Egypt until I give you a word to come back. Never come back until I tell you. Well, what is God is trying to say? So until I cut off everybody. Until I cut off everybody that is looking for your destruction, that little child destruction. Until Pharaoh, all of them did what? Die. He said, hey. Joseph, now you can come back. Why do you think he's the Messiah? Why do you think that? Why do you think that God have to tell them to go? You understand? He says, stay there until I'm done whatever that I am doing here. When I am done whatever that I'm doing, you're going to bring the child. Why? The mystery behind. The mystery behind Jesus living, the parents living. And the mystery behind, they have to also leave Ruth and Naomi. The mystery behind of what you are going through with your family, who are going through with your child, you are going through. There's a mystery behind. But the Lord said, I should tell you that. Let me tell you, you're not fighting a losing battle. You might think you are fighting a losing battle. The purpose for the enemy is that for you to lose your mind, for you to, for you to go mad. But God said, He will not. You will not go mad because who created mind? Mind that created by God. He said, You have your mind in 30, your mind are in his hand, as long as your focus is on him for you to know but this story here, and this battle here, and everything you say, you, you and I and your enemy will see who's going to have the last laugh who will be delivered, and who will be kicked out, who will be kicked out means who is the, the devil will do what will be kicked out, and your son will be delivered, and be free Aram will see you need to learn to trust in the name of the Lord. So I should also tell you, your son and everything, whatsoever that happened, you see, you have to understand that that boy that got shot at, the Lord said, I should tell you, that boy in there, there's a preacher in there. That's why the enemy is after his life. But he said, he's here to announce to you that he is not going to die. All of your family, your sons and daughters, your children, all of them will surround you. And you will talk to them. And you're going to teach them the ways of the law. The battle is not yours. He said, the battle is mine. Thank you, Jesus. The battle is mine. He said, from the day you were born, the enemy has fought her. He has made you so rejected and so feel worthless. But God said, none of my children are worthless. Every, every child of mine are very important. If man rejects them, it doesn't mean that I will reject my own child. I will reject my own child I sent forth on earth. Because even, even Ruth, I did not reject her. Regardless of the background of Ruth, I picked Ruth. I cleansed her. I purged her. And I made her my own. Ah, Akiana. To a point that the children of Israel, she became envious in the land that she was dwelling. I am the same God. Today, yesterday, and forever. Aramu say, nobody, Ekuri Akata, you say, whatever I tell you in, in secret, whatever I tell you, say it in public, stand on the rooftop. Don't be afraid of the faces of people. And don't mind and don't worry what they think and whatever they say. Because everything, all they think and they say, it will go nowhere. Because I am the one, that, hey, Koromasa, I am the one, I am the one that judges everything. Not even you, not any man that judges anything. Those that judge it, I will bring them to the throne room. Let them answer if they can judge. Thank you, Lord. 
that root who have a place. Who have a place in the land of Israel. Do you know what is God, God is doing? You and I have no idea. We have no clue what is going to take place. Mark it. If I've ever believed any word that God has spoken through me. Mark it. The battle. You say, I said to you, you will see dead bodies that are being carried. People don't know what is about to take place. They have no idea. If not, God say, I am not God. And I have not spoken. Ikoromasa. Who can turn things around? Who can change? Adam will say, the benefits. Everything I'm calculating. I am calculating. I have calculated everything. Every work you have done. If you have seen every single, every day, even you come to practice whatsoever you do, I have calculated it and I will pay you and your employer will give you that money. You're going to shock you in a short time. There's a bonus. Remember when that bonus, when that money came, when that money come to you, don't, don't exalt yourself and don't let your nose be up there because I will break you in and out, in and out. And I will pay you back every time that you walk through the door and you do for me as long as the heart is behind and you are doing. I will pay you back every time and every time. Go back. He said, when you go home, go back. The time you joined, the time you did everything and calculate every day. Say amount, how much you want me to pay. He said, don't be like your pastor that thinking that I will put just small amount because she was thinking at that time that I cannot pay her. Say, so watch and see. Have you forgotten? I said, the just shall live by faith. I'm teaching you how to live on faith. How am I see? Are you going to see? You're going to see it. You're going to testify of the goodness of the Lord. The mystery. The mystery behind. The message behind. Have any of you asked me the mystery of whatsoever you go through? The message behind it. Have you ever taken time and asked me for me to even explain to you and express to you the hanging day a little bit? I'm teaching something. I'm taking you to school. Some of you are going to school, school of faith. Some of you are going to school of waiting. Some of you are going to school. Everybody and the school they are, go they are going and the level of the, the class that you are in. Some go, they start. As they are progressing, they go back to the, the end of the line. Because they doubt. They can't believe. I cannot say. Say, read my word to know my ways. Read my words and to know everything that has ever happened on earth is in, the, is in my word. It's in the Bible. Nothing will happen to you that is strange. What you are going through, somebody have already been through. If it is sickness, somebody have sick already. If it is divorce, somebody have divorced already. If it is whatever, somebody have been there. Somebody have been there. And for you to know that God, Adam will say, the mystery behind. The mystery behind. The Lord said, I should tell you, he's going to bring your father. He's going to make a way and bring your father to America. Ikoroma, before your father can he prepare, he will prepare the way and make you and raise you up to a point. When he come and stay with you, he will understand and walk in the ways of God. He said, God said, if I don't do that, the enemy is after him to take his life and take his life. And he will die and end up in hell. He said, but because I've seen the little just that you are doing for me, I have decided the intent to save him. So when you go home, pray against death. What they are planning against him, declare, oh God, don't forget me. Because you say your prayer of the righteous are veiled much. The mystery. Do you know what is going to happen? Very soon, things are about to turn around. Ah, some eyes will see, some eyes will not see. Very soon. Thank you, Lord. I want you to say something that God, don't bless me and let me forget you. I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about God. Say, God, don't bless me and give, me and give you excuses. Don't bless me and turn my back on you. Don't bless me and I turn my back on you. Don't bless me 
and say that I'm too busy. My family, we are busy. This is what I'm hearing. We are busy. I am busy with my family. I am busy with this. Don't bless me that I turn my back on you. And I say all kinds of stuff in the name of Jesus. Help me to understand the mystery of what is going on. Understand the mystery, the message that you're trying to convey to me that I'm not getting it. Help me, oh God, not to be confused, but understand. Because if there be any understanding, you are the one that gives. So I pray that you give me understanding so I don't be confused in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand on our feet. Yes, Lord. Say, God, whatever message in the midst of what I'm going through, please help me. Please help me. To understand it. To understand convey it to me. Convey it to me. So I get it. So I get it. Of what you are going to do. Of what you are going to do. What you have already done. What you have already done. But it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. The eyes will see. The eyes will see. And ears will hear. And ears will hear. And it will enter in the heart of man. And it will enter into the heart of man. You have never done that. You have never done but that. this is what you're about to do. But this is what you're I about thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for helping me, for helping me, to making me understand it. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the mysteries that I get it. I get the mysteries. I get the message in the midst of the situation, in the midst of everything, that you are turning things around. You are moving things out of the way. You are making things clearer, and things will be exactly, oh God, the way you want it to be. Nothing can stand in your way. Nobody can stand in your way. I cannot sit up on you. I cannot sit on top of what you are doing. I cannot gather that you are not gathering in the name of Jesus. I thank you for turning me around. I thank you, oh God, that the situation is serving for your purpose, for your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for conveying the message to me. I am getting it now. I get it now. Thank you for my eyes to be open. Thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of I Jesus. listen to your voice. Listen your, to your voice, voice alone. Your voice Only alone. your voice Only your that I hear that and I, hear. I follow I in follow. the name of Jesus. Name thank, of thank you for the mystery thank you for in the, the message. In the thank message. you for the mystery thank behind, you behind the mystery. everything. Behind thank, everything. You thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's time for our offering. God bless you.